Hello. Hello everyone. Welcome to Erasmus Plus Transforming Europe. It's a project that's brought together students from uh, five IP schools around Europe, uh, in Poland, and in Germany, and in Denmark, and in Croatia, and in the Netherlands. And they've been working with some First World War poems, uh, uh, mainly English poems. So, um, yeah, they've been doing some great work on some uh, well-known poems from the First World War, and I'll just say a little bit about the five that they've worked with in detail, and it's the five poems that they're going to be doing short performances of uh, today. So, uh, firstly, there's uh, Rupert Brooks, The Soldier, which uh, contains the central idea that uh, if a soldier dies for his country in a foreign land, that part of the foreign land will be partly his. So there will be a little piece of England in a foreign land, <coughs> so the poem goes. And then there's another poet called um, Wilfred Owen, who wrote this uh, famous poem called Dulci et decorum est, which um, informed in Latin means um, it is sweet and honourable. And the line goes on, it's sweet and honourable to die for one's country. And uh, Wilfred Owen is, is, is being ironic. He doesn't really think this is the case. And you'll probably see this in the performance that's to follow. Uh, there's two poems by a, a First World War poet called Siegfried Sassoon, uh, one called The Dreamers, which um, describes the act of going to war as being like going to school on a Monday morning. It's really rainy, you're tired, you're exhausted, and it's just like hard work, it's like drudgery, uh, rather than something heroic and brave and noble. And then uh, the other poem by uh, Siegfried Sassoon is called uh, The Glory of Women, and this is the idea that uh, women um, encourage men to fight. They want their men to be brave and strong, and so that's why men go out to fight. Basically, I think he's saying that it's women's fault. I'm not sure about that. And the last poem they're going to work with is uh, Yeats is an Irish airman who sees his death. And this uh, last poem is an interesting poem which uh, imagines that a First World War pilot has just gone to war in order to feel what it's like to fly and to fight. But those that he fights, he does not hate. And um, yeah, the, the, the students have done some amazing transformations of these poems, which we're going to see shortly. So, yep. so these uh, students arrived on Sunday evening and came straight to school on Monday. That is three, four days ago. Yeah. Uh, so that is the time that they've had between then and now to put this entire thing together. They hadn't done any of this before they came here on Monday. And they have done something very special, I think we will agree. They have been working with different types of theatre that they've never worked with before. And they've all thrown themselves into it and tried everything and then selected the things that they worked for them for their performances. They have looked at using masks. You will see characters' emotions on stage being shown by other actors on the stage. You are going to see some stories told from the point of view of a tree, a star, and even a cup. The students have been working together brilliantly. They mostly didn't know each other before, which is almost unbelievable, actually. Yeah. Uh, and they've learned a lot, and we're very, very, very proud of them. We hope that you enjoy the performance as much as we've enjoyed working with this very, very talented, special bunch of young people. And after the performance is over, you will see a video, some videos of work that they've been doing in preparation for this project, so in their home countries. So there's some um, sketches, some plays, there's some... Um, videos of pictures of things that they've been seeing this week, I think, some even. Some recitals. Some recitals, lots of very exciting stuff. So when it's over, you will then have a chance to see uh, on the big screen those things. Yeah, without That's further ado. That's yeah, good.
and come to an agreement. Hello.
1917, a young soldier dreams of going off to the war, thinking that it will bring him glory and honor. Dearest mother, I have the greatest of news. I'm going to join the war in Europe. I'm going to fight for our country. Finally, I get to leave New York fighting for a greater cause. This is the most greatest honor a man can receive to join his fellow soldiers in Europe. And if I were to die, at least I'd die for my country. New York, 
see young American soldiers' parents receive unwelcome news. She's gone. She took an overdose. The old lie, dolce et decorum est pro patria mori. How sweet and honorable it is to die for one's country. Beyonce's grave. The boy spends his whole childhood surrounded with woods and trees. We, the trees, remember the boy from he was a child, when he climbed in our branches and rested against our trunk, when he jumped in our leaves with his dog and played in the mud among our roots with his sister, when his mother, mother called him in from dinner after a long day of play and when his father built him a tree house. When he fell and broke his leg, and the time he had his first kiss among our branches. He was a happy boy. He was a free boy. Now, he is a part of the earth and dust. A dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware. The stars were his boy's guardians through his whole life. Ups and downs, bad and good ideas. And most important, when he made the worst decision ever, going to war. Twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. We, the stars, have seen the changes the soldier has gone through from when he joined the war with such hope and joy to fight the bad guys to his last day. At the beginning, he was so happy to be serving his country. Throughout his training, he had so, hope, so much hope. He was sent to the front line, 
so excited to have a brotherhood that would fight with him. What he did not foresee is the cage that he was building for himself. At the front line, where all the action was, he was given a gun and told to kill all those who were not, who were not English. When uh, he had never killed anybody before, he knew it had to be done, but it did not make it any easier. Every day he would come back to camp and notice people he saw the days before did not come back. And one day, he did not come back. Although dead because of the sadness and tears of a girl, boy cannot be free. Think only this of me. Do you remember the time when I wasn't there? Do you remember living with your family, spending time with your friends, having no worries at all? Keep these times in mind. Honey, you can't move on like this anymore. You have to let go. I have to let go. We both have to let go. Do you want to spend the rest of your days crying over my grave? Looking at old photos of us, paying attention to anything besides my death. Honey, you have to move on. You will be sad your whole life if you won't. <coughs> You're the best girl a man could imagine. You filled me with confidence and courage, and most importantly, love. My life couldn't have been any happier. My childhood was filled with joy and experiences. My adulthood consisted of success and love. My death was sudden. Don't lose yourself in thoughts. Don't use them as an excuse to not participate in life. You're not at fault. You're wonderful. You just have to let go and let me make my way to heaven. After all the thinking and tears, the girl realized that she needs to not move on and the boy can finally be free. Hearts of peace under an English heaven. Bye, sweetheart. The end. about his life every single day. Dearest family, today 
War was exhausting. I got ripped apart by just thinking about you. That was all I could do, eventually. I only think of you. I miss everything about you. Just like the smell of your hair. Like you prepping coffee every day for me. Just being at home with you and the kids. Just watching TV together. And playing with the kids and eating dinner. I just want to see you so bad. Well, I hope I can see you as soon as possible. Your always loving husband. Soldiers are dreamers when the guns begin. Scripted. So I had to cover for Bob and I had uh, to supervise all my colleagues. They now hate my guts. Again? That's your fifth night in a row. Well, dear, this is the fifth time I've explained it to you. Speaking of things I've said over and over and over, how many times do I have to tell you I hate you now? Excuse me? You're gonna criticize me for doing something nice for you? How about this bouquet that you just picked up and never thought twice about? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have extremely limited time. I'm working double shift. If, uh, unlike you, my time wasn't limited, I would spend more time looking for flowers. Unfortunately, though, I am busy. I work a full-time job, which is raising the 
kids. You know something about that if you care about them. Me care about my kids. I work a book, a full time job. I work day and night. I work in a bloody ammunition factory. Phosphor and sulfur. And God only knows what else. Ah, now I break my back day in and day out. The only reason I haven't been conscripted is because I'm the sole breadwinner in this family. Oh, please, you're not getting any over. Any, anything for that overtime. So don't play the victim, okay? Please don't play the victim. I'm just trying to make sure my son has a family to come back to. But me, he won't. My love, I miss the smell of the grass. Pure grass is great. I miss the color of the sky. Here, how will it stay? I wish I was free. Here I'm a slave. I wish that it's fake. Here, just a grave. If only birds would sing, here they are silent. If only air is fresh, here air is wild. I hope the world is a better place there. Here the world is mad. I hope you still love me. Here without you, I'm sad. I can't wait to see you here. I don't have a friend. I can wait to die. Here, best thing is the end. <laughs>